Problems come in various shapes and sizes, some more complex than others. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to distinguish one sort of problem from another. When you want to categorize problems, you can start by looking at the nature of problems, like technological problems, societal problems, environmental problems, and so on. You can imagine that you approach a technical problem in a different manner than a societal problem. But still, that's just the nature of problems. When you want to get a grip on the complexity of problems, there's two dimensions you can consider. The first dimension has to do with stakeholders and disciplines. If a problem has more stakeholders or covers more disciplines, it's probably going to be more complex. The other dimension is the availability of case-relevant experience. Some problems have been solved many times before, like how do I get more customers in my shop? But some problems are new, they have never been solved before, so you can't see how other people have solved them before you. An example would be, how can we open the schools again without spreading more COVID? New problems are harder to solve than old problems. When we make a matrix using the two dimensions, experience and stakeholders, we can map out the complexity of the problem and determine the basic solution strategy. When a problem only has a few stakeholders or covers a few disciplines, and there is plenty of experience in solving the problem, we will call the problem complicated. The strategy for solving the problem is traditional research and project management skills, which we will also call engineering. When dealing with complicated problems, there is usually only one best solution. When a problem has many stakeholders or covers many disciplines, but has plenty of experience in solving the problem, we will rather call it complex than complicated. We will explain the difference later. To solve a complex problem, you usually use design methods to investigate the problem and try out possible solutions. The same goes for problems which only have a few stakeholders or cover a few disciplines, but there's hardly any experience with solving these problems. They are categorized as complex, and again, the strategy to solve those problems is to use design methods. The top category in complexity are problems with many stakeholders and hardly any experience with solutions. Managing the COVID crisis by the government categorizes as such. To come up with solutions, you need to involve lots of people and you need to experiment to see what works and what doesn't work, and also see what's acceptable and not acceptable to the majority of the stakeholders. Problems like this can be called chaotic, and there's no handbook to solve them. Problems can be divided in four categories, the first one being simple, but we won't mention that category. For discussion's sake, we will leave out the chaotic problems as well. We will just stick to the complicated problems and complex problems. Don't worry if you mix up complicated and complex, and you don't know what the difference is. It's hard for everybody, even the Webster dictionary mixes them up. However, to develop your problem solving skills, you need to be able to distinguish one from the other. Let's start with complicated problems or systems. Complicated problems can be broken down into subproblems and subproblems of subproblems. You can break down a big problem in teeny tiny subproblems. When you solve all the subproblems in the right order and you don't forget anything, you have solved the main problem. Difficult, but straightforward. In complicated problems, there's a hierarchy in subproblems. They are usually connected to a central issue at the top and there are clear objectives and deadlines. Here's a nice example. The municipality of Utrecht wants a new bike bridge over the Amsterdam Rijnkanaal. The municipality is the principle and the objective is clear. A contractor can draw up plans and make an offer. A complicated problem can be solved by using traditional engineering, project management, process management and top-down management styles. A complex problem, however, differs a lot from a complicated problem. For one, if you try to solve a complex problem using tools designed for complicated problems, you will surely mess up. Usually, there is no main problem. You have a swarm of players and issues that are interrelated and collaborative, but do not display a hierarchy relative to each other. Usually, players even have opposing interests. There are no simple solutions to complex problems. The system is constantly moving and shifting. Even looking at the system and asking questions 
can influence behavior of the players. Trying to change the system is very hard. The system cannot just be influenced by using false and directives, but can be influenced by motivating people and possibly setting a framework of rules. Techniques to tackle complex issues are design methods and experimentation. Examples of complex systems are markets and societies. The stock exchange, the housing market and the labor market are complex and hard to predict. The economy is a complex system. So are ecosystems and big organizations like Hogeschool Utrecht. Take 5 minutes to come up with a complicated business problem and a complex business problem. Choose one of each and discuss the difference in the chat. Take about 5 minutes. Stop the video right now and resume when you have completed the assignment. Welcome back! Did the assignment go well? Because this is an asynchronous module, I can't really discuss your input right now. But I will discuss an example I came up with myself. An example of a complicated business problem could be we need to create more brand awareness. And an example of a complex business problem could be we need to improve our brand image. When you look at these examples, you might say, okay, What's the difference? Well, if you need to create more brand awareness, you can actually measure that directly. So, if you put in more effort to create more brand awareness, and you measure if you indeed created more brand awareness, you're done. No complexity there. But, if you look at improving your brand image, it gets complex. Brand image is not a goal in itself but it's a means to create more sales or more margin on your sales or to make people see you in a certain way. The difference is the relationship between effort and results. If there is a direct relationship between effort and results, the situation is only complicated. If there are more levels of complexity between effort and results, the problem is probably complex. Social entrepreneurs are seen as a different breed of entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurship is seen as a special form of entrepreneurship. I actually disagree with this view. There's only one type of entrepreneur and social entrepreneurs need to make money as well. Otherwise, they have no future. There's a difference, however, in the nature of the problems they solve. Social problems are usually more complex than business problems. Also, the social environment is harder to fathom than the business environment. Commercial entrepreneurs sell to customers and social entrepreneurs solve problems, but the bill is usually paid by a different stakeholder. The tools to solve business problems and social problems are exactly the same. Research First, dive into the problem, then experiment with possible solutions.